Hi, Woody, and welcome to Queer Magic. It's great to have you on the show. And it is far too long since we actually saw each other in person. So uh, really, really happy to have you here. Uh, so I know you as artist, creator of amazing willow sculptures, including the one at the Witchcraft Museum in Boscastle, and most recently at Blenheim Palace with the oh. lovely shy horse and the cockerel <laughs> that I saw you made the other day. So, um, how have you been? I've been well good, um, I guess. Yeah, I've been very, very busy uh, art-wise. And uh, this, of course, has been in the time of the lockdown and all this big pandemic for, well, over a year now, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, and so much has happened in that. My partner left me after 16 years. That was, a a, that was a massive bummer. Uh, Sorry to hear that. That was a really, yeah, that's quite horrid. But um, but the one of the best things has been about the reconnecting with people. You know, I am a bit of a sort of a loner. And, I'm, you know, I think if I had my chance, I would be a hermit of some sort, just me with nature. But um, it's been so fantastic reconnecting to people, you know, reconnecting to all my friends from, from QPC, from people all across... Um, uh, some like radical fairy people in America and you know it's I don't know I think it's because it's been zoom you know because you can and so yeah, I've actually yeah. I've done so much reconnecting to to pagans that you know including like yesterday my fantastic friend Crow who you have reintroduced me to so that's really really it's just been that's been the really brilliant part of it all yeah as I well was as obviously really just, I was really happy about that because um, <laughs> I knew you were very fond of each other and I was really happy to reconnect you. So, and I'm very excited about being reconnected with Crow too. So. And, and she, well, she, she initiated me to Wicca. Oh, right. She was I my initiator. Not. So there you go. So yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> I think she might've mentioned that to me, but I had forgotten. So that is, that is awesome. Yeah. So, so yes, that, so I'm good. Excellent. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. So tell me about, uh, how long you've been involved in paganism, Wicca, and radical fairies and parts adjacent? Well, radical fairies never, ah, to be okay. honest, because I've, I've met a lot of American radical fairies and they've always been brilliant. I've just never really quite meshed into the British ones. So ah. not because there's anything wrong with them. It's just it's just not it's just not happened, really. Hmm. Um, so, well, how long? It's a tricky thing, really because, <laughs> um, okay, so my leanings in paganism are um, the Fae. Uh, yes, I remember the, attending the, a brilliant the, workshop that you did about the Fae, <laughs> where I think I disappeared somewhere into some other world and had to be fetched back. <laughs> Indeed, yes, that was the point. <laughs> you, went, you went to... Uh, that fairyland to the land of the fae. It was. It was I did. It was a beautifully orchestrated thing between me and a friend, a fae friend of mine. Um. So, uh, yeah. So, well, well sorry. I'm sorry. Interrupted. Now. Yeah, the fae. Uh, the fae, uh, spirit, the spirit worlds, uh, as in like animal spirits, like a, a very shamanic way, and Canalis, of course. Canalis is my patron god, uh, and I'm. Um, I've been a devotee of his for ooh, about 25, 30 years now. Um, but I came to paganism because I'm a seer. So I see the reason I like, I work with the Fae is because I see them. I can see hmm. Fae, ghosts, you know, spirit people, all that malarkey. So, and I always have had oh, that. Wow. So um, where I was brought up, um, we had this massive garden at the bottom of, truly at the bottom of the garden, there were fairies. Wow. And there were shitloads of them. And I really got on with them. I also got on with human kids in the area as well. I wasn't like just like some weird nutter loner sort of thing. But I could see them and I could hear them and we could communicate. Since I was like four or five, no, maybe, no, five or six, we moved there when I was five. And I never lost it. I, I, I personally do believe that nearly all kids can do it. Wow. Nearly all kids have that, that part of their brain that can see. 
Mm. I think nearly all kids are seers um, in the in the true sense of the word. Um, but I think our society and our upbringing kicks it out of us and locks blocks down those parts of our brain that can see because you don't really see with your eyes you sort of see with maybe your third eye I guess mm. but you see you see with your brain and it's maybe through your eyes but it's not of your eyes you, yeah I know what you makes mean sense yeah yes so yeah um so I was taught by the fate with with lots of lessons and and but mostly with games and stuff as a little kid but then as I got older and older and older and older um, they initiated me when I was 16 on my 16th birthday I had this big initiation with them that was really really intense and really serious and um, they declared me a witch wow and and it so that was when I was 16 and then I sort of got on with uh, meeting people I went and lived in Glastonbury for a few years I met lots of witchy people there and um, discussed witchcraft with them. And it was exactly the same as what I knew. Mm. So all the stuff about working with elements, casting circles, what's, and then there, there's some particular massive differences, but <laughs> particularly about morals. <laughs> Fairy morals are very, very different. Mm. Um, um, so, yeah, so that was my... My training was through the Fae. Wow, that's amazing. And loads of people just think that you're a nutter when you tell them that. Even witches who do who, who work with deity and other unseen beings. Mm. But I couldn't give a shit what anyone <laughs> thinks about me anymore. You know, I've gone through all of my life knowing all this, the truth of all of this and mm. having the experience of it. And then when you meet people, human people, and you go into ritual with them you find that you're doing exactly the same stuff mm. as you know and there's no one else that ever trained you and I, I wasn't like born from someone's hip or something as a, a fully formed witch or something you know mm. <laughs> so I, yeah, well I that. find it immensely reassuring that you know to know that that we are do that what we're doing is what the fae would uh, have trained you to do so you know that's really great and actually i think my my experience of um being approached by people for training um you know you get somebody who says i've been psychic since the age of six and it's like there's this sort of thing of i mean maybe some people have been psychic since the age of six but there's a time and a place to say those things and you know i've known you for um very long time uh 33 years whatever it is um <laughs> and so you know you can say that to me and i'm like i know this person to be i know you to be a sound and sensible individual so if you say that i believe you um but it's when somebody kind of comes on with the whole you know i was initiated by my grandma and and i've been a psychic since the age of six and, and in their introductory email to you and you're like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's well, sort of there's, ways there's, and ways of saying these things. Isn't there? There's also lots of little, little, little tests you could do with like creating something in your hand and saying, well, what am I holding then? Yes. Go, well, yeah. Uh, and they go, oh, we know. It. And you go, no, it really wasn't. So <laughs> that's good. I like that. I remember that one. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, there was, there was all, there's that. And um, when I moved, I moved around a little bit, um, doing a degree in art and that sort of thing. And then when I came back to London, I started doing, um, going to, um, I went to Sean. Do you remember? There was a woman called Sean, a witch called Sean. Uh, House of the Goddess Sean? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. And so I, I used to go to some of those things. That's where I met some really, really interesting people. Hmm. Um, because in those days, it was actually really, really difficult to get to something that was open. Yeah. That was for witches, you know, unless it was a coven, you know, and you'd hear people about, oh, I'm in my coven, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, how do I get there? You know? Yeah. And um, so there was that. And at this, also at the same time, I did a, um, a course with Caitlin and John Matthews on Celtic shamanism. Mm. 
which was just brilliant because all my life as a child, um, along with the Fae, I used to, there used to be a ghost fox that used to always be running around and give me advice and that sort of thing. Cool. And uh, cool. then when I did the first, the very first journey work of um, finding out what your totem is, um, my totem, my my totem was up in the top top of a tree, and I was like, oh, oh, okay, that's a bird or something. Then I thought it would be a fox. And yeah. then this fox yeah. stuck a stuck a head out of the wind uh, out of the canopy and went ha ha fooled you and so <laughs> so yeah so hence me being called Woolly Fox because fox is my totem so she's ah uh-huh. right she's yeah amazing. I kind of assumed it was your actual last name but um <laughs> or did you change no. it by deed pole or something I changed it by deed pole yeah ah cool yeah yes well so, it suits yeah, so you that's eventually my... so <laughs> <laughs> so that's my 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 strings really um. I met some fantastic people, um, which is, and uh, eventually through my wonderful friend, um, Karen, who's Australian and she's now back in Australia. She and I met, our, um, when oh, we, we heard a, a guy talking about um, eco-paganism and eco-activism mm. for pagans called Adrian Harris. I Do you know remember Andrew? him well. Um, yeah, so um, we met him and then we decided to, we, we accosted him and made him go for a drink with us and we were just vetting him. We said, you need to be in a coven with us. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so we bullied him into it in a way. And then uh, he introduced us to some progressive Wiccans and we formed a coven called the Red Herrings and that went on for 13 years and that was brilliant. Fantastic. So that was, yeah. So that's my beginnings. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, my next question is about um, what whether your tradition um, is affirming and inclusive and of queerness and and any other anecdotes in that area that you want to share. Well, because my stuff comes from the Fae, the the Fae are incredibly fluid. Mm. So many of them. But saying that, there are still lots of phase who, who who believe who have a really really strict hierarchy, like the hierarchy of king and queen of courts and that sort of thing, or the strongest rules. Really, whoever's got the strongest amount of power. You did say their morals were very different. <laughs> yeah, and they'll just yeah they. But equally within that, it depends on what court you're in or what or what group of fairy, fairies that you're talking to, you know, mm. some beings like water fairies, for example, like undines and that sort of thing. It's so difficult to even ever get them to identify themselves as any gender because they're so, I mean, it sounds really crass, water being fluid, but they are so fluid, gender yeah. fluid, intensely so. Air people too. <laughs> but, Makes um, sense. But earth people tend to be very, 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 definite yeah definite splits and that sort of thing but I don't know it depends it's like I had that I've met a load of people fairy people um throughout the years and I knew um four there were four fae that used to live with me in my London flat Mm. they were all sort of not escapees but they'd all run from different courts because they didn't agree with the system oh wow and there's there's rebellion with even within fey, the fey you know and two of them were not heterosexual <laughs> anyway when they moved here we, we formed a court here hit down here in devon and uh, the court is now a thousand strong and the the, the people that come that come from all around the country Wow. who've left courts and I don't think there's any not even one straight person in it wow that is <laughs> they're all so queers. cool they're all queers they're all hybrid not hybrids that's wrong they're all mixed race of different fairy races and that sort of thing so it's amazing that there is such a call for the stuff that we do yeah that we as humans have done there's in our pagan world there's such a call for that still in the fey world that's awesome <laughs> I, I I'm I'm like really happy about that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> fabulous. Um, yeah, I had a um, uh, I had a hearth spirit in my last house in England. Um, there was a hearth spirit 
that lived there and I had another entity that lived in the wall that was like a fire spirit of some kind um and I I never got the name of the, the fire spirit but the I did get the name of the the hearth spirit and he told me never to mention it on the internet so I, I can't say please I was going to say please don't tell me no no <laughs> absolutely not wrong. yeah no it, he told me never to mention it on the internet so but the but the th but the thing about like queerness and 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 the fey or queerness and if it's if it's about me and the people that I hang out with like spirits for example totemic spirits uh, you know shamanic spirits mm. could not give a fuck at all what they care about is that they, they care about the work that you're doing with them the, the the how much you're actually prepared to put in um whether you're serious about it or um yeah if you ask for help then you've got to also put in all the work yeah that type of thing yeah. they couldn't care what genitalia you have or who you share it with it doesn't yeah. matter absolutely same with day same with deities i mean i had such a I had when I when I first ever devote, devoted to Kanunas, mm. it was a real horrible journey and a really horrible struggle, and I didn't want to do it. He totally bullied me into it. I felt, but it was right. But I went to a certain Wiccan <laughs> European Wiccan gathering and told people that I'd just become this, and the shit that I got from people. Really? Wow. Like, he's a heterosexual god. He's our god. Find your own god. He's not a gay god. And I was like... I, That's I was outrageous. So I was yeah. really, really, really shocked by people that I really did truly admire, um, to some extent, at least. My admiration... Well, up until that point, yeah. My admiration <laughs> went right down then. Yeah. And it was, it was incredible to see when you've got people who have been talking to you and allegedly accepting you but yeah. actually suddenly them having this fear that you're trying to queer up the deity that they work with or they admire so much or they worship or whatever and that was never my thing no. I was just telling you telling them Kanonis has chosen me I yeah. didn't fucking choose him I didn't want anything to do with him Fuck's I sake. think it's you know it, it's interesting because um he I think those people have given him a sort of very a very heterocentric sort of image right of course he's the concept and, co the consort but he's of not, the goddess yeah he's absolutely but, not I, I tell mean, you he's he's also my consort right I believe <laughs> you know, it I mean that's the thing care. he's he's totally <laughs> I mean my experience of Kononos is like yours that he is you know genderqueer and I don't know like he's he's queer um he's I don't experiencing he. I don't experience him as ultra heterosexual or whatever you know I think there's also a different thing I mean what was interesting for me was that was that was like my first year of Kanonis and because I it sort of started off wrong because I didn't really want to be with him mm. <laughs> But half of that was because I believed the hype of what other people have always always said. Right. So why why would I have really really full on heterosexual god choose or want this queer bloke? Like why would that happen? I have no idea because it can't match. It, I, you know we can't obviously meet anywhere because I'm not going to turn heterosexual. I, it's not going to happen, you know. And yeah. so it felt really wrong. Until uh, I until I started working with him, and then you know, and it's like how wonderful key, where gods are wonderful, humans are wonderful, but fucking hell, when they get together, the mistakes and the and and the perceptions that people put on things mm. can totally get ruined, you know. And just talking to to Kanonis, being with him, doing ritual with him, and just seeing the real thing he's not this great big horrible big vicious bastard of course he's not. gonna kick shit out of everything and go yeah and no like kill, yeah uh, and, and fuck every woman going sort of thing you know it's not he's not like that that's some of the stories about him are like that but he's not he's so gentle yeah so loving so motherly <laughs> you know 
and um, but also he's really really strong and yeah ferocious and all that so you know he's all of these different things and I think there's a wonderful thing about being a devotee particularly is that you tend to work with that deity nearly all the bloody time mm. and um, so I get to see all these different phases all these different sides and feel all of the depth of what that's all about and especially if you get if you carry him if you aspect mm. him you get to see even more and more and more and more and it's just yeah it's like it's brilliant to have people's human people's perceptions of a deity and they can tell you the rough job description you know it seems like you know that always seems like they've got oh this is the goddess of this it's like well actually she's also just like this I did a ritual with her but she was something totally opposite to that and she was wonderful you know like yeah it's great to yeah have I mean a the, I always find it but then to jump in yeah and have that real experience and you know and absolutely no one can tell me yeah that he's not all these wonderful things that I've experienced with yeah him. well I mean as soon as you aspect to deity you realize the fullness of their of who they are more well yeah. some of the full you know probably only getting 10 percent. but i mean i've i've had kunonos invoked on me um so yeah absolutely to the you know he is very masculine but not in the predatory sense of that word mm. um and you know i'm absolutely convinced that he's you know <sighs> I, I don't I don't even know if it's the you know but anyway I think he he's why shouldn't he be the lover of men as well as the lover of women and non-binary people and all the other genders it's well definitely um, I mean I know I know personally I know devotees full of devotees who are trans lesbian gay heterosexual heterosexual women heterosexual men like everyone yeah he chooses a bit of everything <laughs> absolutely why not i mean also the same the wild for but say of course he's going to choose everything you know yeah lovely. like i've got a big thing for odin as well and he's definitely not all the rubbish that people say about him you know um because he's he's my cup i got given for my birthday oh very oh, devotee very good i'm a devotee to have my tea oh, very good yeah, um so. but yeah like you know <laughs> odin is very queer friendly and and queer in my opinion um yeah he really gets think, he gets a bad press too <laughs> i really don't think that most gods i've never met a god that's had a go at me about no. my sexuality at a, no. ever me neither it's never it's never been a problem yeah i can understand if i was going to do a ritual if i planned to do a ritual and a god said okay what we need is um really like the high priest to fuck a high priestess or vice versa, or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. they wanted a, a heterosexual physical union going on, It'd be great, brilliant, we'll find it, we'll find the right priests and priestesses for you, yeah. but it's not going to be me, you know, and yeah. that's fine, absolutely. I don't care, you know, yeah. absolutely. I just, don't th I just don't think it's, I mean, to me, the great I think when things are so human-centric, yeah, and I think that's a problem, one of the problems with, and it's, I guess it's got to be really, but with paganism, and with witchcraft, it's particularly, it's very, very human centric. Yeah. Like our festivals are about, you know, the wheel of the year is very, very about um, first use milk for us to have. You yeah. know, it's about yeah. it's about agriculture and farming and that sort of thing. And actually, that's not what happens at, at, at Involk for me. You know, <laughs> at yeah. Involk, it's about ooh something stirring bloody hell what the hell is it you know and it's yeah. really dark and it's really scary and you know it can be all these different things but it depends on and I think this is where being queer you can to me I feel being queer is that you you delve deeper because we've been given the thing that you're we're presented with when you first start on the path mm. with, either with all the books or with all the famous people um within witchcraft, um, like your gardeners and valientes and all that sort of thing. Mm. Everything's a very, very presented as a very, very heterosexual thing. Yeah. And and that's that's fine. But because we're queer, we have to delve further on. We have mm. to pick up that book and go, oh, okay, 
I like the idea of that ritual. I'm not going to do it the way you've done it. Mm. Or, or I might try it the way you've done it and see if it works for me. You know? um, yeah. Well, uh, you know, we'll queer it up somehow. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for me, you know, you're talking about you know, sex in the circle and things like that. To me, the great right is any situation where an invoked upon person makes love to another invoked upon person of any gender. Um, so, you know, and I, I think that the gods don't much care about the who, the, like you say, they don't care about the bits involved. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, I mean, so I was listening to, I saw, I saw your pro, your um, interview you did with Crow, and you talked a lot about polarity in that, and you know, like I've never really got the whole point of polarity personally, yeah, because my polarity can work with a tree as well as it can work with a absolutely, man, yeah, as well as it work with a woman. And yeah with... well people but people think i mean yeah. okay i i didn't start banging on about polarity <laughs> at all <laughs> banging on ha -ha. um basically i wrote the first book all acts of love and pleasure inclusive wicker and then the pushback from the the heterocentric crowd was oh but what about the polarity right so i went what about polarity do you actually do any polarity stuff in your rituals because i don't um it's never really been part of my practice and then people were saying oh um yeah but polarity is made by a man any woman blah 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 and i'm like bollocks you can make polarity with absolutely anything and then i did a series of workshops demonstrating that you can in fact make polarity with absolutely anything um so <laughs> so one of the things we did was um we made polarity with marmite uh, people who like marmite and people who like chocolate and we we sent the energy to um, to support trans people in the USA. So, and while we were doing it, there was a car alarm going off, and then um, at the end, the car alarm stopped. When we sent the when we'd when the energy came together, the car alarm stopped, and then we sent the energy. Well done. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I ever want to go in that car just in case it's like a covered in marmite and chocolate. Yes. <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's, no, I, um, I, I think I, I can't remember why. Oh, we ended up talking about polarity because of the two chalices thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know, like for me, I, I, I think what since I came out to myself in '88, which I came out quite late, but um, I've never been in the closet ever, and I've never taken any shit from anyone. Mm. And and I, when I was moving into into witchcraft circles. That were mostly heterosexual. I realised that I wasn't going to do it there either. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. Absolutely not. So, um, so yeah. When people talk about polarities and that sort of thing, and I've really been very polite about it and just gone, well, actually, I think it's just that you're. It's it's not that you don't think it can work. I think it's just that you're a bigot. <laughs> and nine times out of ten, that's right. Well, yeah. It's not just. I mean, I, too, I, I totally get if you've got a, a, a particular ritual that you do every single sowing, it's all, always the same one and it involves certain things. You don't want to change it. I get that. But just don't tell me that it's the only way of doing sowing. That's your way of doing it, you know, and yeah. that's all fine. And But I do find, I have found with 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 all aspects of of challenging people that it's, it's up to the way that you do it, I suppose. You can say brilliant, and that's wonderful. But have you ever tried it like this? Mm. You know, I'm uh, like I got that European <laughs> Wiccan group to uh, to all experiment with. They were doing they were doing all this casting of circles outside in woods with great big fuck off iron swords or athames, and the folk there were just like screaming their heads off and running. Yeah. They lived there, you know, and I was going, so I, I, I did a ritual, I, I did a, a ritual workshop with everyone, or invited everyone, and nearly everyone came, and I said, try it with this, try it with a feather, try it with my antler, Athami, mm. by all means use it, you know, try it and then see what the energy is like, and I want some of you to sit in the centre, feel the fey, feel them before you cast a circle, now do it. And, you know, and people started writing to me after that and saying, never really, really thought about it before. 
we're going to use my Athemi at home in our temple. But when we're in the woods, we've now got a wooden one. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just like, all you've got to do is show the change, is show how it's how it can be different and like not to challenge people too hard, I think. Yeah. Well and that's I what I try to do. I mean about, it's a funny thing. Being queer in, in circle, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a funny thing though, because you know, the people who like inclusive wicker are like, yes, I've been waiting for this. It's great. Boing. Right. And then there's the other people who go, you know, and it doesn't matter how nice, nice and sweet you are about it, because you know, I think I'm just saying a reasonable thing. And then other people feel attacked because I just said a reasonable thing. So I never know. Um, but I think, uh, you know, there, there are those who are receptive. And then there's the people who go, oh, well, I don't like all this inclusive wicker thing. I don't think it's wicker, rah, rah, rah. And, you know, and I'm, probably the same stuff was said about progressive wicker back in the day as well. So. And that's, but that's fine in its own way, you know, like, no, I, don't, I would hate it if ever the, the whole world was everyone's the same. Well, yeah, and we all no, but it's fine. Well, I, don't, I don't mind people saying I don't like that. It's not my cup of tea. What mm. I object to is people saying. I don't think that's wicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same with your, you know, you saying um, being, you know, uh, the, the stuff that you do is, um, <laughs> you know, if you're doing it in a Wiccan context, then it's wicker, right? Um, and I think that, that people can say, oh, I'm sticking to my same old, same old if they want, but like, just don't say that what other people are doing isn't, isn't kosher. No, for sure. I, I, yeah. I do feel that the vast majority of people are willing to give it a go. Yeah. I, yeah. I have found that, you know, I know I've been painting a very dark picture of this European Wiccan group, um, but over the years, over the years when people stop being scared mm. i think people will come into all the queer rituals even the most ardent anti-queer people were coming mm. and were loving it because it was safe they yeah. weren't being threatened you know it wasn't saying you've got to do what i do it was doing hey have we ever tried this yeah and, and it was great. So, you know, honestly, we, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. You can teach people and change people yeah. and op open their open their hearts and minds. Well, that's what I've been trying to do. <laughs> and yeah, you know, sometimes you're pushing at an open door and sometimes you're just not. Uh... But, but then you can also do other things like uh, QPC, for example. Yeah. Queer yeah, Pagan absolutely. Camp, you know, like, because our Queer Pagan Camp came out of ad adversity adversary adversity adversity anyway, yeah three 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 of us had um uh all gone off to had uh, different camps in the summer and had really shit reactions from the two lesbians and me a gay guy um and we, we were all discussing it one night and going oh well this happened to me and like oh i you know i think one of the women was they were not they were shouted down in a in a pagan place because they didn't breed, <laughs> so they weren't part of a fertility um, religion. Yeah, oh, I hate that attitude you know? so much. And you know, and mine was I've just been having <laughs> I've been to that European place and been having <laughs> really bad reactions about stuff. Um, and then, yeah, and we one of us I can't remember who it was, and I've got a really crap memory, so I'm sure that someone else. One of the other two would definitely remember how it happened but my memory of, is someone just one of the women said what we need is a bloody queer camp a queer witch camp or a queer pagan camp to include everybody because mm. it wasn't like we wanted to have just like a an lgbt thing yeah for example yeah. that was part of it but it's our reaction against the non-inclusiveness of everything else that we've been experiencing was our natural reaction was to say we want it to be inclusive of mm. everybody yeah. they just need to sign up to what our principles are and our principles are be about being pagan and they're about being queer mm. and our version of our version of queer was inclusive of all sexualities and all genders and all uh, gender identifications mm. and 
Um, and it was just so important to us. But, you know, we would obviously put like words like lesbian, gay, bi, trans, hetero. You know, we were sort of evening up maybe through the word, the way we put the words, we were emphasizing all the people that have been put down all the time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, bigging us up, bigging ourselves up. Yeah. And, but, and then, and then mentioning as many sort of different types of paganism as well, that, so that we, it wasn't going to just be, even though we, we three were all witches, mm. we didn't just want a club for ourselves, you know? Yeah. We wanted, yeah. we wanted that inclusivity. So we wanted to, we wanted people who were all different parts of the pagan um, thingy. <laughs> painting I don't know what's the word pagan landscape thank you thank you thank you yeah yeah so um and it was brilliant it was great it was a fantastic thing yeah um, I really really wish as a biggest regret of my life that I didn't get along to it so after um, all the years it went, God, it went on for about 20 years I think I know right? it's, it's it's still around we are still sort of holding it there's a group of us that have been holding it our last camp had about 30 people I think came to it which isn't like the the strong heydays of 120 or whatever that we had at, yeah. at the beginnings but it was such a wonderful wonderful deep amazing experimental place yeah that um and full of fun as well and full of ritual and chanting and all that sort of stuff but also full of sex full of partying full of good times and it was yeah I learned so so much and like most of my really deep friendship groups now are from people from QPC yeah. they still are well it's funny because I mean I know so many people from QPC like there's you and uh Lindsay Wolf as well and um and Lou and I guess Phil went along to it as well and you know there's just so many people I know uh, and um you know people in wales as well and yeah. i'm just like why didn't i go ah <laughs> <laughs> well you were on a different path video i'm sure <laughs> oh something like that yeah i was i was still trying to make the uh, make the wiccan event more inclusive so mm. yeah uh, i'm still there banging on the door <laughs> um well, we will. I think we are still going. That's it's great. It's a lot more. It's a lot smaller. It, obviously, it hit its time when it had to implode, with factions happening and that sort of thing, and that was very sad. But I don't know. I went and did. A, I went and did a weekend course with um, Starhawk about five years ago, and um, and I talked to her about that, and she went, "Yeah, I can't tell you how many camps I've I've been part of." St starting up and everything and yeah i got shot down <laughs> forming people, storming think, norming and conforming off. i think is yeah the, yeah sometimes you never like, get oh, past the storming part well i was thinking oh well if it happens to starhawk then that's brilliant it's you know <laughs> I, I, I can feel sort of it's okay that it happened to me as well you know that's all right yeah yeah well i mean you had like 15 20 year run whatever well lou said 15 you said 20 so somewhere around that I think you know, well the first one was in 98 so there's right. been there's been years when it didn't happen whatsoever so you know yes I'm, I'm sure that Lou's Lou's got a much better brain than me <laughs> I some, pretty pictures, some you know. length of time you know more than five minutes which is that's very good it's yeah definitely an achievement I think and I I, I also um with my friend Drake, we started a, a we did a Canonus camp as well, and we had that going for about five years as well. Nice, and that, that was wonderful. And we, that was really really inclusive as well. And I think there's a lovely thing if you if you start something, then you sort of decree what what the uh, parameters the rules are. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you say right from the beginning, this is you know like QPC obviously was a queer camp, but Canonus camp wasn't a queer camp, but it was run by queers, so. It's a really, really, it's a totally inclusive camp. And if you have a problem with someone's gender or their uh, sexual identity, please don't come. Yeah, absolutely. So we wrote that in the, we just wrote that in the, in the beginning of the, of the write-up about the camp. So, and that was per perfect, you know, it's great. So 
Sounds very similar to the rules for my coven. Yay. <laughs> it's like any, anyone can join as long as they're not a transphobe, a homophobe, or a racist, or, or an ableist, or a bigot of any kind. Mm. Perfect. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, do I feel you, like I've been rambling, sorry. One. No, no, <laughs> it's all good stuff. Um, I'm just looking at the list of questions and going, where shall we go next? Uh, so, I was going to say, oh, yeah, do you have a definition of queer magic? And so far, everyone's had a completely one well, uh, overlapping different definitions of queer <laughs> magic so don't feel you have to get all kind of you know academic here oh no i really can't do academia that's why i'm an artist <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna ask tell ask you to tell us about the art as well shortly um definition of queer magic oh it's really tricky isn't it it is um, No. Right. Fair enough. <laughs> it's undefinable. I don't, think I, do. I don't think I do. It's like magic is such a magic itself is so amorphous and so it's about what you put into it. You know, it's how you direct it. You know, it's a it's a non-gendered, non uh negative it's got no it's not negatively or positively charged. It's just a it's a life force. Right. So uh, to queer it up would to, to be to add every single um, possibility into it, mm. I think. And so you, it would be a very gentle caressing of this energy <laughs> to be, um, yeah. I love that. That's great. Um, yeah, I ended up saying that the the Venn diagram that of, of the two of queerness and magic is actually more or less a circle. Um, yeah, because you know, uh, I I believe that we as queers are inherently magical beings, um, and that actually, you know, there is a queer this that magic itself is strongly queer, um because it's liminal and because it's you know we can be in more than one world at a, at a time and um it gives yeah. you that you know possibly either because we're pushed to the margins as being queer or because there is something actually that links us to the fae in some way um i th that's why i think the two are sort of not synonymous but like really really intrinsically linked well i do, I do and, and i get that i do definitely get that i feel that it's so difficult to try to say something without sounding like you're het bashing because i don't want <laughs> mean to be het bashing because i've got so many heterosexual beautiful witch friends pagan friends of all sorts who are heterosexual and i'm not doing that at all yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Some of my I just, best friends I just, are heterosexual. I just, yeah. I just, I just feel for myself that um, the whole thing about being queer. One of the things about being queer is the fact that we've had to, one, come from a, a place of defensiveness in our society because it's mm. been so, it's so hetero, and it's been so attacking, in you know, in the beginning of my queerdom sort mm. of thing, um, that you come from a place of of, of defence. Uh, but also then we've come into i've come into like the world of human witchcraft i'll, I'll just say about witchcraft mm. i found it really 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 not inviting at all and you know and th so through the years it's been like like twisting and turning and moving and ducking and diving and going all over the place and you know not coming at it like this coming at it like from all around finding mm. what works for me what what doesn't work for me and all that so there's this I feel that when I now work with magic of any sort I come out from with a really big world view like I come I come in, I don't come in like this mm. I come from sides and I come from underneath and I come from above wow. because that's the way I've learned how to work now 
And mm. so because of that, I see so many possibilities of what's going to possibly going to go on or where you can go. And it's, in one way, it can be a bit more, it's not so directional, but there's a lot more, I feel that there's loads of trust within it. I mean, I can be intensely focused. I'm not saying I can't, mm. but and I hardly ever do any spells or rituals that, that involve power, moving power or mm. using music. I hardly ever do them definitely the way I plan. They always evolve during the ritual. And and I think it's because of this this, this queer way of looking at it. Of like I'm not just power overing or mm. you know, I'm going, oh I'm doing that, but oh look that's moved over here. So actually let's move that around. Oh look, we're not oh actually no, we're not gonna do that at all. Look. <laughs> oh look. Oh okay, this curse has just turned into a blessing. How does that, does that happen? <laughs> Or vice versa, you know. So yes, yeah. I th I think so. Okay, there you go. So really, really long winded. I think that's the definition. Magic. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's really tricky because it's like you know, obviously there are magicians who who are not queer, but then, but there is something inherently queer about magic, to my way of you know, it's the sort of. But then you know, and if you're not careful, you either come, you either start getting essentialist about queerness. Or you end up, um, you know, mm. saying that queerness is to do with the twilight or something, which it's not necessarily. So it's like, ah, it's all very amorphous. I think as well, though, there is the thing about if you, over the years, if no matter how, what type of magic that you work with, um, if you're true to yourself and have really, really looked at what works for you and what doesn't work for you, then... You know, I'm never going to do het magic, yeah, because I'm queer, yeah. And I've yeah. worked with magic for such a long time that all the magic that I do is going to be queer. Yes, I mean, it occurred to me to say that one possible definition is um, queer magic is magic done by a queer person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's another possible definition, um, but I, I like the fact that it's kind of elusive and you know a bit slippery <laughs> well lubed dear well That's lubed. exactly yes well lubed magic yes <laughs> god i have to bring it down i do apologize <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of this fantastic book by mark thompson which is all about the the history of kink and how that shaded into spirituality and stuff uh, and there's a whole section on fisting in San Francisco in the oh I guess okay. 70s um, and the transcendent pe experiences that people had as a result of that and it's really powerful good, stuff. Good for them it's never been <laughs> ever I've, I've can't never say I've tried it but um, felt like I needed to go there <laughs> but you mentioned Lube sorry that was my yeah, that was where I my do. brain went. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> Just to just to prove that my brain is equally, you know, full well of <laughs> strange corners like that. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, oh yes, right. That was the other thing. Uh, oh, do you have a favourite book on queer paganism, Wicca, witchcraft, etc.? Again, I went looking uh, uh, in my bookshelves, and I've bought so many books and they either been gay written by gay men for gay men and there have been some interesting bits but it's not my world I don't really I'm not I'm queer you know I'm not most of my friends are, are, are female or female bodied at least you know mm. or lots of trans people now <laughs> I mean lots of men as well but yeah. um, anyway I, it doesn't really uh, they, they haven't really fitted with me there's been interesting bits but then there's there's interesting bits in Farrar's books and um, Gardner's books and mm. um, so my, would you say, that, would so you say this? I haven't really got it I yeah. haven't really yeah. found a good queer book I mean I always go back to this like the spiral dance that's you know book. starhawk because it's yeah. not because of, it was one of the first magical 
books I mean, it's not really hugely got that much in it really mm. <laughs> if you look at it from its intent uh, the, the, the contents of it it's not it's all very really generic mm. but um it was the first magical tome i ever read that put she first mm. you know and it was just so important to me because i hung out with women so much um in my magical world um to actually have she or he written all the time you yeah. Know? yeah instead of you know and so that was to me that was queering it up that was i know it's feminism rather than queer but yeah it was again it was, it, was a, it was a it was a beginning of that you know yeah and um and i but i went to a, i've been to about four or five reclaiming camps I think my first one back in the 90s in, in America with Starhawk and mm. those other people. And they did a really stupid theme. <laughs> they were doing Tam Lin and they actually brought fairies through who were really, really vile and were nasty to everyone. So that was all quite funny. Mm. Um, but uh, but um, the, the inclusivity of that, of, of reclaiming, was always just like such a brilliant thing. Yeah. The, the, the and statement the of unity. Yeah, the tradition it's based on as well, like Anderson Ferry is very, you know, also very queer friendly and inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's really. Yeah, but no, for me, books, I find other people's opinions a bit boring. <laughs> I, I, I like it when it's in person. Yeah. But I've not really got much about from books. I'm so. I'm a, I've always been, I think it's because of my upbringing. I'm such a um, eye of newt type witch. Mm. You know, nearly all of my rituals are outside. Mm. I don't do things generally indoors. Um, not just because I work in a big sea, but because I want I want nature around me, you know, and mm. I've got a really lovely big garden, no neighbors. So I can be dancing around naked, banging me, banging me drum on. Perfect. <laughs> and picking up bits of dead animal and putting them into my spells and things like that that I happened to have found cool. that day <laughs> very earthy yeah so yeah so it's not really an as my my world isn't really a uh, a very cerebral one mm. it's a more sort of a guts getting down to it thing cool i like it <laughs> um so you meant you mentioned would you see a distinction between gay and queer then yeah definitely because we I do a, as well, but there, there was a really interesting thing. Like in our second year of um, QPC of Queer Pain Camp, mm. um, we wanted we our first year had sort of like seventy people come, which was amazing for mm. something that's never happened before. And the second year, we decided to have an I think it was a, either an article or an advert, but I think it was an article in the pink paper, and we got lots of gays and lesbians who came. Mm. They didn't get queer. They didn't get the inclusivity of everything. We had some lesbian separatists. We had some misogynistic gay men. Right. And we were, our whole definition of queer was that you you respected everybody's yeah. gender identification, their sexuality. You respect it totally. Yeah. You never question. You, the only questions you ask is if you're unsure of someone's gender or, or you know, how they like to be addressed. And you just yeah. ask them, yeah. you know. Yeah. And same, and the same for their, their, their type of paganism or whether they practice or whether they're just interested or whatever. And these people didn't get it. And it yeah. caused so much shit mm. to start with because you had people being really aggressive towards each other and you were meant to be there in this whole spirit of unity, you know? So I think, and equally like we, we also had um, allegedly very, very queer people objecting to heterosexual people being there and some of our, our heterosexual friends who came who are wonderful witches um who came right from the, the very first year mm. are far more queer than loads of the gay guys lesbian women mm. you know because they really get that ultra ultra inclusivity total acceptance of each other mm. and, and it's, it's an, interesting because it, I, I that's been my experience to some extent that i started going on about inclusive wicca and stuff and some of the most vocal opponents of it have been gay men and lesbians and i'm like is this because they 
kind of sacrificed their queerness to fit into some heterocentric mold or or what you know i don't know and like i generally find um yeah i i completely agree with what you're saying is where i'm coming from there um and i'm just you know i just wanted to hear it from you because i you know it's interesting to hear it from somebody else with the similar experience i mean i've been in some in my times in london i've, I've been in some just gay men groups and there is a lovely energy of that if that's mm. what you're after and you know it's like male only space or yeah female yeah. F female only space or trans only space or whatever any space you know like um there's a, there are there are sometimes there's a need for it at times. Um, yeah completely agree yeah, like i've those, been in women only spaces but i like prefer women only spaces that are open to trans women as well um mm. i mean oh dear i just screwed that up anyway <laughs> you know um no no i do get that not, not just cis women but also trans women is what i meant yeah yeah and um and i think to me to me the whole be thing about being queer is is i'm just carrying that on i'm just carrying on all that that inclusivity you know i don't want I'd love it if, it if we didn't have to use the word. I mean, I'd love it if everyone in the whole world was queer. Yes. Like, just because it's a it's a matter of um, the way that you 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 see the world. It's not about your gender or your sexuality. Yeah, I think I so. Feel. Yeah. I, do, I, think. I mean, I just I do think that the majority of queer people are LGBT. Yeah. Well, that's partly because we've had to see the world from a different perspective because we've been forced to the margins and then looking at it in a, from a different angle. Yeah. Um, but I think um, uh, there are straight people who, for whatever reason, whether it was because they were bullied at school or because they've always felt inclusive or whatever it is, um, who, who've also had to that experience of being pushed to the margins in some way and having to look at things from a different angle. I just think that anyone who's got any sort of sense of a fucking brain would actually do it really, you know, like, yeah. Um, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been physically attacked for being a witch by Christians, like really nasty bastards. Wow. Uh, and it's, and I've never understood you know, and I and and we, you know, you obviously you hear about the out in the big world, nasty, nasty fundamentalists of all mm. all different religions, all doing shit to each other. You know, and it's just why? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. just leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> What's it got to do with you? <laughs> and the same for the same for sexuality, and same for all of it, really. Yeah, absolutely. Why can't we all just get along? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why when I made my wonderful Can Canunus statue at, um, for the Museum of Witchcraft, there's a big spell in it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> of love it all, love them all. We are, we, I'm giving out. You will, you will, you will, if you like me, you're going to really love everyone around you. So, that's awesome. That's yeah. a good spell. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I love that. <laughs> um i love the statue there it's really lovely um so i remember watching your uh i think that was when i added you on instagram that um that you were just doing that yeah so that's been a while yeah it was a great it was a great honor to be asked to make that the, the museum of witchcraft it's really good yeah well sometimes but it pops up in other people's pictures and i go i know the guy who made that look that's woody's, woody's, woody's picture it's woody's statue <laughs> i feel so proud honestly it's it's quite ridiculous how proud i feel about it you know it's 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 the museum of witchcraft to start with which i i, I love the place and i really like mm. um, simon costin who's like the, the the director of it now and everything he's lovely and um but i've got to make my god <laughs> Yes. In a place in, as, a, as a statue of worship, you know, it's just like absolutely brilliant. And Perfect. an Oregon Christian hotel across the road hates it. Yay! Yes. Well, wasn't it funny that when the um, Boscastle flood happened, that 
the Museum of Witchcraft was totally intact, apart from a bit of getting a bit soggy. Um, and the the Christian place that was across the, the courtyard um, was completely flattened and it was a hole in the ground. Yes, and we shouldn't laugh about this because that's obviously terrible. Well, it, the reason it was hilarious. <laughs> no, was I'm really not. I'm really, really not going to carry that off. Sorry. Oh no, you're probably not. I will. I will be yeah. happily. But it was so funny because they were like, "Oh, the devil looks after his own." But like, when the rain falls on, you know, when some, if if it had been the other way around, they would have said, "Oh, God has smote the witchcraft museum." <laughs> But because the weather, you know, so I just had this Im image of God and the devil like arguing over the joystick of the weather. It's like, there's my turn. I'm going to put a storm over there. <laughs> Not that we deal with the devil anyway, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just did a video about the witchcraft and the devil. So. Oh, OK. Sorry. Yeah. You do then. Maybe you do. Um, I've never met them. So. Well, it depends what you mean by the devil. That that is the point that I make in that video. That it's like, which devil are you talking about? Are you talking about um, Pan with a whiff of sulphur, or are you talking about the full-on principle of evil in the universe, which obviously we do not have any truck with? Um, but like, if you were a medieval peasant and somebody said, "Oh, there's witches in them narrow woods, and they're they're doing bad stuff, like having lots of food and orgies." You'd be um, like, right, I'm off to the woods right now. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my granny. So you get your fucking hands off her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the only, the only place, place we can get fresh vegetables for us vegans, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yeah. So your art has been, has now, has basically, that is your, your working life, which is amazing. It is. I love it. Um, I was a children's illustrator to start with for like 30 years. Um, and that sort of died a death with a mixture of a gay porn star and um, and a bad agent. So <laughs> the bad agent to stop, stop getting me any work and a gay porn star came on the scene called Woody Fox. Oh. So suddenly any time any little lovely little children were write it, putting in Google Woody Fox to see all my lovely ca cartoon animals, which I did very cartoony, big smiley animals. Yeah. So they, they got lots of cocks. Oh, oh dear. What, so this other <laughs> so Woody suddenly Fox Suddenly all these, suddenly was... all these, all these, uh, yeah, all the publishers just stopped, dropped me. Oh, so that was because somebody completely different, obviously. It was not me, honestly. It was not it was, you. Right. No, no, no. That's super it's, awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, like, time, uh, well, Woody the is, is the, um, is, oh dear, phone's ringing. Um, oh, good, Bob's picked it up. Um, yeah, Woody is the term for a, a hard-on in, I believe, New Hampshire, so. And, well, yeah, most of America, I think. Yeah. Yes, I think so. But, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's but, probably um, obvious name for, for a, um, for a pop star, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, at the same time, uh, for years, once I, when, when I moved down to Devon, I started doing, playing with basket weaving and that sort of thing, as well as illustrating. And then just someone said to me once, one day, have you ever thought about putting those two things together? So Brilliant. animals that I drew all the time, baskets, willow, stuck them together, made a fox, and it's just taken off. And now it's, that's all I do. Yeah. And I'm always busy. Amazing. Yeah. That is, yeah, I love your stuff. It's so good. It's like, I get very excited when I see a new one popping up on, <laughs> on your Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, and I, and I love doing it, which is a really, really good thing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I am so, I'm so full of gratitude to the cosmos, to the gods, to everything. I live in a wonderful place. I do a job that I adore. I have, a sea of fantastic queer friends, um, most of them pagans of some sort, most of them witches. Uh, I've sort of got enough health, I'm sure, uh, even though I just turned 60. Uh, huh, and I've had, I've had a, wor a world of experience. I so love being me. You know, I hate the fact that my partner left me, but I love being me. And I, I feel, you know, I love that I can see the fae. 
I yeah. can love that I can work with them. I would love that that I'm a witch. It's my the thing I'm the most proud of. Always have been. Yeah. That I'm a witch. That's I love it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah. sounds positively idyllic. <laughs> well, it's, it, it is. But I mean, obviously, it's got loads of shit as well. But, you know, that's all part of life, isn't it, really? So. Yeah. But I, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. I really wish that we could introduce more and more and more people to witchcraft, particularly, mm. um, out of all the... Well, it's the, it's the paganism that I really know, I suppose, and shamanic stuff. But but witchcraft, particularly. You know, I've, I've, I trained a... a few years ago I trained someone to you know to initiate and all that um and that was a wonderful wonderful experience I've been waiting all this all this time for, for to meet us because I had to I knew whoever I trained had to be a seer because mm. so much of my stuff is through that and so now and then and it was wonderful to to train a trans person so and it opened up so much stuff for me. It was a wonderful to queer up what I already was queer was just such a wonderful growing experience. And I'm so, so grateful to them. Yeah, that's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. That was a brilliant thing. So, yeah. So I pass on what I know a lot. So that shan't die then. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> well, it was traditional in the. Um like the old seers would only have like one person that they would pass their knowledge on to oh, um oh god is that it i've done me lot then <laughs> i get i'm gonna pop me clogs now <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. um but yeah no i was thinking of the uh the secret uh what's it called uh the secret secret commonwealth of uh elves fauns and fairies written by robert kirk and he says mm -hmm. that each seer in the highlands would pass on to one person all right. Okay. So you've you've had you've done your quota. You can do more, but you, you've had your quota. So that's good. <laughs> gorgeous. Yes. yes. <laughs> ah, well, this has been completely lovely. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we go? I'm really glad that you're doing this. I. Um, It's a, it feels a little bit to me. It feels like that. What I a little bit like what I just said. Like I feel like I wanted to pass on my knowledge, sort of thing. Mm. And you know, I don't. I haven't seen any people documenting queer paganism mm. or queer magic because I do think it is different. And I think they like it's time that our voices were heard, and not just in the the. It might be quite big to us, but it's still quite small worlds, mm. you know, like because you're doing this and it goes on YouTube. For like this, so, you know, <laughs> people could be watching a bit of porn, then then some songs and then quickly do some queer magic. <laughs> I don't know if they do porn on YouTube, but anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. And sure. I, but I just so I think it's so fantastic that you're doing this, that, that the whole world can see that there is another way yeah or thank that you. there are myriad ways mm. and it's not about better than them and this is the only magic just for us queer people sort of thing it's about have a have a go have a have try walk outside of your comfort box there's a massive massive world out there and you Yvonne of showing of showing them by by doing all these interviews and I'm I'm very proud of you thank you very much oh thank you thank you very much yeah, I mean, it's been really good fun to do. And, you know, it's been great connecting with people. And um, I just think, I really think it's important. And, um, and you know, hopefully do more as well, because mm. it's been it's been really good fun connecting with people. And, um, and it's been lovely to reconnect with you as well. So <laughs> thank you very much. One day we will be in circle again. Yeah. That'll be good. That'll be good. Uh, next time I actually get back to the UK. <laughs> Who knows where we're going to be all travelling or not. Oh, that's true. But, and you you're know, always welcome here. Yeah. I was going to say, you're in Canada, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like Canada. Yeah. Well, you're always welcome here. So that would be great. Excellent.
Yeah. All right. Lovely.